Hey guys, this is Jake here, and today we're going to talk about how to modify this Delta Rockwell lathe. So what I've got here is a Delta Rockwell 46-525 that I inherited from my grandfather. Um, my, my cousins had this for the past 15 years and we just moved to Minnesota and said, do you want it? I said, sure. So uh, I got it. But uh, my grandfather really messed this thing up. Um, under here, there's only one speed, it doesn't have the pulley attached to it. Um, it needs some love, quite a bit of love. So uh, I'm going to have three videos. The first one is going to be modifying the motor. I'm going to take a motor out of a treadmill and show you how I'll go about putting that motor in here. So I've got a variable speed uh, with a DC motor controller. Uh, the second one, this has no tool rest. So I'm going to be making my own tool rest. And the third one is just going to be kind of cleaning this up and getting it pretty um, for that. So let's go ahead and get started. So let me show you the setup I've got here. I pulled this out of a Proform 525EX that I got of off of Craigslist for free, um, especially up here in Minnesota. People are giving these away literally every day. So this is what I've got, and I want you to stay tuned at the end of the video. I'm going to go over some tips and tricks you can look for in a treadmill you want to convert uh, as far as the motor size and the control and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let me just run through this, though. This motor is a GS Electric 2 horsepower, 130 volt DC motor and this thing will spin at 5900 rpm at 17 amps so it's it's pretty good it's kind of small um it's got this kind of cast iron flywheel on it um it's okay uh, it's got a thermal switch in it that's where i get four wires coming off a red and black for power uh, to the motor and then two blue wire, wires that are a thermal switch that help protect the motor um, and keep it from overheating uh, i like this little controller too because it's real simple I've got my power and ground coming in AC. Uh, I've got my DC to the motor, and then I've got this clutch right here. And then I've got these three wires going to my potentiometer right here that's going to control the speed here. Uh, the only other thing is a reed switch that I took out, and you may have an issue with that, or you may not. It just depends. On this one, I just disconnected it, and I don't have an issue. Sometimes you do, and you might have to monkey with it to get the reed switch to work or jump it. Um, but we'll address that later. Um, let me show you how this works. I just plug this in. And so you got an LED. A lot of them have these LED controllers. And as soon as I get power, I'm going to get that second LED. Just turn this up. So that's at about 20%. 40%. Temporarily, I have this all wired through just this little switch right here. This is the safety switch on the uh, front the front board on top of the re of the treadmill, and so I'm just going to bypass that. And actually, I'm probably not going to use this motor. Let me show you my other motor I've got here. Um, I've got this one as well. Uh, this one right here is out of another treadmill I got for free, uh, but the controller was just I I couldn't figure it out. It was way beyond me. Um, and I like this because this is much simpler, much easier to deal with. Um, but this bad boy, uh, this is a one and three quarter horsepower motor at 90 volts, uh, 10 amp motor, and it spins a little bit slower, which is fine, uh, 4700 RPM. Uh, the couple things I do like about this, it's got this nice big fan on the back, and so that's gonna get a lot of airflow in and keep the, the motor cool. And it's got this nice big heavy flywheel on here, which is gonna be nice. Uh, I still run into the same issue as the other one where I've got this serpentine belt set up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo this little lock and, it's, and just pull it off. It's got a key keyway fitting. And then I just got another pulley off of Amazon. This is a little 2-inch pulley and it goes on to a 5 8 inch shaft. And so I'm probably going to cut this right here, leave the pulley with my set screw and then just put this on right next to it. I should have enough room. And 
set it up. So let me let me connect up this motor and show you the difference. We got to get to installing this. I actually saved the what this is mounted to that portion of the treadmill, so I'm going to cut that down and modify it to fit inside the lathe and actually lift it up a little bit higher than where my AC motor was. And I'm going to use the rest of that area down there for storage, which would be cool. So uh, let's get to it. So I started off by taking off the front panel here and also removing the motor, which is no good. It kept seizing up, and uh, then taking out the bottom shelf. And then I'm going to use that to mount my new DC motor on. So I'm laying out where all the electronics are going to go, uh, the controller, and where my potentiometer is going to be coming through so I can mount the switch through the actual front panel here. Next it's time to lay this all out and get it bolted up. But then I realized that the piece on the front of the panel, which I drilled through, didn't see it. Uh, that's not going to work. So I'm not going to use it anyway, it doesn't matter. So that's all coming off. So I really wanted to keep this switch that came with the lathe, I believe it's original to the machine. So I just took some of the wire harness that came with the treadmill and cut out what I needed and just hooked that up to the switch and so I should be ready to go. Next I need to drill a hole for bringing the power into the machine as well as we use the breaker that came with the old treadmill. Next I took out a section of the treadmill base that I cut off the old frame and mounted that to the board that I took out of the lathe and then attached that to the inside a little bit higher than it was before to give me more space. Next I took off my serpentine pulley with the flywheel, just a little tap, brought that off. You might need to use a puller to pull out all yours off. Make sure you undo this head screw. Then I go ahead and cut that off very carefully and just ground it down and then smoothed it out a little bit with a file just to kind of get it to fit nice. Just tighten up that set screw right there and then reinstalled the new pulley that I got right on top of that one.
Next, it was time to fit my belt, so I just took a guess on how long I would need it and uh, put this together. It, you're going to need some needle nose pliers if you've ever used this type of belt. I really like it. It's really adjustable and, and works well, nice and snug. But my first shot, it didn't make it around the bottom part of my motor, so I had to take it back off and add a couple links back onto it. So after getting all my electronics mounted to that front board, it was time to wire it up. So I attached my power, and then I left the wire alone that went from the controller to my potentiometer. I just wrapped it up instead of splicing it down. I suppose I could do that later, but I just wrapped it all up together, and then attached my motor to the controller as well, and then just buttoned up the panel. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this project turned out. I think it's going to work really well for what I'm doing. Um, I just need to get on to the second part, and that's going to be video number two. And that's going to be building my tool rest base. Uh, I have no tool rest base from this. I have a tool rest. I'm probably going to get another one or just fabricate one. We'll see. But I have no base, so that's going to be the second part of this video. So look for that soon. So I told you I would talk about a couple of tips and tricks when you're looking for your own treadmill. Uh, number one, try and get it for free, especially if you live in the Midwest and where it's cold and people have a lot of treadmills in their basement here in Minnesota, they're on Craigslist constantly. So look out for those or for just maybe 20, 30 bucks, someone just trying to get rid of it. Um, that might be a good way to go. Number two, uh, if you don't know what size motor is in the treadmill, one thing that I've done is if I can see the picture on the posting, I usually look up that brand and that type and then I go and hop on Amazon and look up that brand of motor and usually you can dial in in the picture and see how much horsepower that motor has. Most are like a horsepower, two horsepower, and that's usually enough for what I'm gonna be doing here. So look for those if you're looking at you know doing this project yourself, that's helpful before you even start to kind of start off on the right foot. Um, lastly, I wanna put some links below of some people that's helped me on YouTube to kind of jump into this project. I could have done this project without them, so check their videos out below. And if you love this video, if you like this video, if you don't like this video, uh, doesn't matter. Subscribe anyway. So leave the comments down below. Subscribe below, please. And this is Jake of All Trade saying we'll see you next time.